if you remember that the first part of Christmas is spelled Christ. Praise the Lord. When you try to take him out of it, the thing you do, you deny him. Praise the Lord. His name is above every name. That that name, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. Every eye is going to sing. Thank you, Michaela, for playing drums tonight for us. Praise the Lord. So we want to, uh, and uh, of course, Timber sang for us. That's wonderful. We want to, let, let, let me uh, make an announcement here. Some have said something about Wednesday night. Not, not having church on Wednesday night on account of the uh, uh, weather is supposed to be bad anyway. So I'll tell you what, come back Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, and we'll just not have church on Wednesday night because of the, the weather is supposed to be bad. And But everybody try to be back on Sunday morning. I don't know that it is, but they say it is. And they're supposed to get some snow. I don't, think, I don't know what all, but anyway, why? Uh, I don't hardly ever do this, so it sounds strange coming from me uh, to say uh, that uh, uh, don't don't be in church on me. <laughs> I emphasize being in church so much. Praise the Lord. But I, I want to uh, I want to say to every one of you. To them that are that are not here this Christmas, uh, I told them on uh, uh, back on uh, uh, Easter, I wished them all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. So them that are not here, they got the message. Praise the Lord. So we, uh, uh, I, I want to talk to you just a little while. Now, I'm not going to take a lot of time tonight. But I want to say that I'm glad you're here. Will we all be here next Christmas? Will we all be able to be here? Will, will uh, Brother Walls be here? Will Brother Walls be gone? Will I be gone to be with Jesus? Regardless of where I'm gone, uh, whether I'm here or whether I'm gone, uh, it don't make a lot of difference. A lot of people say, oh, but it does, but it don't. If you're just think with me, I'm going to 16th chapter of Luke tonight and begin reading at the first verse uh, of that and read a few verses. I want to ask you something tonight. Now we're fixing to begin a new year. We're going into a new year, 2013. This is a uh, new year. But I want to ask you, have you been faithful to what God's called you? The Bible said, and he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a stewardship, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I have heard of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou, for thou mayest be no longer a stewardship. And then the stewardship said within himself, What shall I do? <coughs> for my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot, I cannot dig to bag. I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I put out of the stewardship, they that receive me into their house. What I'm going to do when I'm, I've been a stewardship, I, I, I've been responsible. I, did, I, I want to talk to you, I, I'm, I'm never reading no more, I'm going to talk to you about responsibility. I know you, you say, but Brother Walls, I'm a Christian. What responsibility do I have? <clears throat> well, let me, let me say this in the very beginning. You and I have a responsibility to God 
to hold up everything that is God's. His name, His integrity, and our integrity is judged by, by the way that we serve the Lord. And Job, the Bible said Job was a perfect man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. But Job was called on to prove what he had. Now, I know you say, but Brother Wall, that's a hard way to have to do it. Of course it is. It's a hard way for us to have to sometime prove what we are, what we got. But God's going, remember this, God is going to ask us to give an account. Every knee is going to bow before him, every eye is going to see him, every tongue is going to confess him. Amen. And what we have done for him is all that will count. Will we stand for the name of Jesus or will we say it don't make any difference? I want you to know it makes a hundred percent difference, hallelujah, of what we do and what we say. Now you say, but now, Brother Walt, if I will tell you something. If I serve the Lord like a lot of people do. I go to the house of the Lord when I want to. I, I serve the Lord when I want to. I pay my tithes when I want to. I give him the praises when I want to. And, and I, uh, I sing when I want to. I pray when I want to. All these things is want to, want to, want to. Then I wonder what God really thinks about me. My stewardship. You have a stewardship. I have a stewardship. We must prove to God what we have is real. Why would we expect the world to want what we got whenever we don't take care of what God has given us? Amen. You know, if we want the world to have want what we got, the thing we need to do is prove what we have got is real. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's too many people that are playing a church instead of getting down to business with God and serving God because they love God and because that God their Savior and God has forgiven them, they forgot all about that. All they want to do is make a show. Hallelujah. That won't work. You're going to stand before God and when you go before God, He's going to ask you, are you, are you a showsman? Are you a, hallelujah, are you a real, is this real that you got? He's not going to ask you nothing about that. He's going to say whether you are or whether you're not. Praise the Lord. Whenever that you and I when we come before God, God knows where we have a clean heart. He knows where we're telling the truth or not. He knows whether we, hallelujah, whether we believe Him or not, or whether we are putting on an act. God knows all of that. Praise the Lord. God wants us to give to Him. Just be simple. Hallelujah. And that's all God wants is a simple Christian. I see a little commercial on the, on the Royal Channel and... It says, I'm just a dirt farmer. That's all I am. Hallelujah, just a dirt farmer. Hallelujah, that's all I am. He don't, I mean, it, it, uh, uh, did, did you know that when you and I, if we would just be Christians, that's all God wants. Not, not church members. Church members are about a dozen and thousands, and there'll be a thousand that'll die without God in their life. But I'm talking about being a born-again Christian, having Christ in their life tomorrow morning, yes. tomorrow evening, tomorrow dinner, all day long having Christ. When they go to bed tomorrow night, go to bed with Christ, wake up with Christ, <laughs> hallelujah, and love the Lord with all your heart. God wants us to love Him with all of our heart. God don't want part of us. He wants all of us. He wants us to be a stewardsman that he can depend on. What if you come, hallelujah, and God, it, let, let me notice something. God took a man and he gave him five talents. And said, now you go, you go make five talents. And the man went out and had the five talents and he gained five more. And he come back, hallelujah, and he gave a man, he gave him just 
two through talents or three, I forget what. But he gave him and he said, go out. And he went out and he doubled his and he came back. But he gave one man the lightest load of all of it, gave him one talent. And he, when he gave him that talent, you know what he done? He went out there and wrapped it up in a napkin, buried it, and hallelujah, and said, I know you was hard to please. And he come back without anything to offer to the Lord. Now you see, God gave the man five because he had the ability to gain five. And he went out and he gained five. He gave the other one two. He gave eight. He had the ability to go out and to, uh, to gain the two. And then he gave the man one and he didn't even have any talent and he wouldn't even go out and even try. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Wouldn't even try. You got to get out there if you want to. Do something. You've got to be willing to do it. God wants you to serve Him. Yes. He don't want you to do it as to show yourself something smart. He just wants you to offer to Him your best. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just give Him <coughs> your best. Hallelujah. You know what? Some of the best cooks that's in this church. And I know there's a whole bunch of them here when you eat long many years I've eaten with these cooks. And uh, again, a few times around the bell, praise the Lord, there's some good cooks in here. But most of them go into the kitchen and take a simple little something and make a meal. My, my grandmother was Indian. And you didn't go to my grandmother's house and my granddaddy Walter's house. You didn't go to their house and leave without eating. That was the old tradition. Y'all all know how that went. You went to their house and you could go in and, and grandma could go in and in 30 minutes she could cook up a meal that was fit for a king to eat off the table. Praise the Lord and do it just so simple. A little pinch of this and a little smidgen of that. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know what a smidgen is. I don't know what a pinch is, but praise the Lord. That's the way they, and whenever they got through with it, they had it cooked. They, you could eat it. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, most of the time anymore, they go to the cookbook. Hallelujah. And they use the cookbook like they do their Bible. They just don't read it. And when they get through, the meal ain't too good. Are you here? Yeah. That's the way, you know, that's the way that people do God. They they do a little of this, a little that. Hallelujah. I, I, I've, I, I know uh, people that could take a boiled egg and, and make a, a great meal out of it. Praise the Lord. Oh, but for the world, hallelujah, I, that, that a boiled egg wouldn't be enough for me. Praise the Lord, would it? Or would it not if you didn't have nothing else to eat? What about them people that go and take a little handful of rice, swallow it, and let it swell up in their belly to keep them from being <coughs> hungry all day? That's all they got. Hallelujah, that's all they can have. And you and I waste. How many people go to church and waste God's time? Waste the Spirit of God waste the joy of the Lord and go home without anything. I want y'all to know something. God was here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. In a mighty, mighty, powerful way. And the Holy Ghost fell in this place this morning. Uh, and and let, let me tell you something. God don't want us wasting his time. He wants us to be good stewardsmen over what God has given us to do and what he's given us to work with. <coughs> Hallelujah. You know what it takes? I, I don't know how people, preachers go and order their sermons from the gospel publishing houses. Hallelujah. I don't want to preach somebody else's sermon. I want to preach my own. Amen. I want to preach what God gives me. Yeah. Hallelujah. God knows what the church has need of before I will come behind this pulpit. Praise the Lord. Are we, are we letting our stewardsmen 
Chip, are we real good scripture ones or are we just letting him drag it? Don't make any difference. Hey, we have responsibilities. If this is your church, you have responsibilities to run. Boy, it's quiet in here tonight, ain't it? Hallelujah. The responsibilities is, you see, I, I this ain't my church. I'm only pastor in this church. Hallelujah. I started a lot of churches all over the country, about 20 churches in in the 60 years I've started. Hallelujah. I go back by sometimes and, and look at them and see if some of them are still going. Some of them are going strong. Some of them, hallelujah, are going. Uh, uh, some of them are going. Shh. Hallelujah. But what? I done my best when I was there. I done everything I could do till God said move on. You got another work to do. Now, I'm not responsible for somebody else's stewardship. I'm responsible to preach to you. You're responsible to what God wants you to do. <clears throat> if you, if God has <clears throat> called you to work and you don't work, hallelujah, he said, don't work, don't eat. <clears throat> Let's make that spiritual. If you don't work for God, you can't, you can't have no spirit of God dwelling in your heart. You've got to work for God. See, I've been working for the Lord for a long time. Hallelujah. I, I, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the, uh, people forsaken or God's children begging bread. Hallelujah. God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. David said that in his writing. Praise the Lord. But I want you to know there was never anything any truer. If we are good stewardsmen, and we do what God tells us to do. We give God what belongs to Him. We give Him our time. We serve Him. We give Him our money. We give to God what belongs to Him. We can be blessed. Or we can live on Harper's Avenue. Or we can live on Hallelujah Avenue. That's up to us. Praise the Lord. Some, some guys said, well, I... I, the reason that I'm poor is because I was over on the back side of the railroad. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. I grew up on the other side of the railroad too, but I come out of it. I got ready to move. I got up and moved out of it. Hallelujah. The reason we don't, st the reason we stay on the, in the slum part is because we choose to. We can get up and spiritually walk out with the glory and the power and the anointing of God. I want you to make up your mind that in 2013, I aim to be what God wants me to be. I aim to serve Him with all of my heart. I aim to rejoice in Him. I aim to have the joy of the Lord in my soul. Yes. It's time. It's time we quit making excuses. Hallelujah. But Brother Walls, <clears throat> Hallelujah. I would have, but you know, I just know that if I did, somebody wasn't going to like me. When God saved me, I like to tell these things, but when God saved me, I was one of the big old tall red-headed girl. She was uglier than I was. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And twice as mean as I was. Praise the Lord. But when God saved me, I said, I can't go with you no more. Hallelujah. I, I, my life is changing. And I, I've got to be, I've got to live a Christian life. I can't, I, I, I can't. I'll wait for you. Hallelujah. She done dead and gone. I'm still living. I hope she's waiting on the other side for me. I hope she got ready to meet, meet God. Praise the Lord. For what? Hallelujah. We have to sometimes, you know, when I come to the Lord and I got saved, them, them friends that I had that, you know, that I'd spent fortunes on, that I'd, I'd hauled hundreds and hundreds of miles to buy booze for them. Whenever I got saved and I come to the Lord, hallelujah, they wasn't my friend no more. No, old Willard done gone crazy. He done gone religiously crazy. 
No, I hadn't. They just thought I had. Hallelujah. But they ought to see me when I really got to work. I believe.